Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm watching how a delicious prawn can kill you, allergies explained by Kultgesagt. Obviously I know what an allergy is, I'm pretty sure the majority of people do. However, I don't know exactly how just a single, for example, prawn could kill you. Like, how does that exactly work? So let's find out. Link to the original video will be down in the description below. An allergy is like finding a spider in your bedroom and exploding a nuclear bomb. Sure, spiders are upsetting and now dead, but so some are people might actually do dog. that. You can be allergic to an incredibly diverse and weird amount of stuff: pollen, dust, insect stings, animal hair, any kind of food. I don't think I'm allergic to sweat. anything. One of the wildest things about allergies is At how least I don't fast think they so. are, breaking out suddenly and violently, and you can develop new allergies. One moment you're enjoying a shellfish you ate thousands of times before, and the next moment you wake up in an ambulance. A shrimp can kill you. How bizarre. So it can just come out of nowhere? Like, what are allergies? Why do our bodies flip the table on harmless stuff? There's a wild and interesting idea we want to share with you. Humans might have created allergies by accident by getting rid of worms. This is very what? upsetting and interesting. How? How does that For your tie ancestors, into that? being infected by worms was a reality of life. We won't get into the disgusting details, but in a world where drinking water and our poo were close buddies, some species of worms found just the perfect cycle of life. They enter your bodies uh -huh, with water yeah. and make themselves at home, sometimes for decades, and then release their eggs or larvae with decades? your poo, which used to go back to the water we drank. So, until recently, in evolutionary terms, our ancestors had to deal with frequent or permanent worm infections. This yeah. caused all kinds of unpleasant health effects. Our immune systems had to find weapons to get rid of them. But how do you do that? From the perspective of a cell, worms are city-scale kaijus, reaching beyond the horizon. Worse, instead of skin, parasitic worms have an I mean, elastic it's a parasite. Your layer body will have to get rid of it. even stomach acid. You really need to pack some punch to cause damage. It takes an army to kill a worm. We're simplifying, but basically when a worm enters your body for the first time, intelligent cells notice their presence. They move to your lymph nodes and activate specialized antibody factories called B cells. We explain them in detail in this video. These B cells are told that they need to fight parasites and start producing a special class of weapons, IgE antibodies. Tiny protein crabs with two pinches. I still don't that understand how this ties into like allergies. To metal. IgE floods your entire body and basically begin arming a nuclear bomb, an army of really scary cells called mast cells. Mast cells are huge, bloated fellows filled to the brink with histamine and other nasty chemicals. Unless an allergy works the same way that fighting of these worms does. Your body, your immune system, for some reason, identifies something in the food or whatever that's going into your body as bad and it tries to get rid of it. And so that's why you have the allergy. I'm guessing it's something like that, maybe? They pick up the IgE floating around and cover themselves with them like angry hedgehog grenades without their safety pins. And then they just lie and wait, angrily. So now, you have millions of bombs in your skin, lungs, or gut. Until the day that yeah, try to get through TSA with that. trying to enter your body. There's not much time to get rid of it, so things escalate rapidly. The mast cells with their IgE spikes grab onto the worm particles and kind of explode. Blow themselves they up. release all of their dangerous chemicals It's like a once. kamikaze. A few things now happen in rapid succession. First, some of the mast cell chemicals wound the worms, ripping wounds into them and making them really unhappy. Then emergency chemicals like histamine cause massive and rapid inflammation, ordering your blood vessels to flood the battlefield with water to flush the worms out. They also order your cells that make mucus to go into overdrive and cover the worms in sticky slime. Other chemicals are like air raid sirens, okay. screaming loudly throughout Why the your sticky body slime? for anti-parasite soldiers. Eosinophils. Maybe so they First can't move. thousands, then hundreds of thousands hear the alarm and leave your blood vessels to where the mast cells are causing inflammation. Not only do they make the inflammation worse, they carry extremely toxic chemicals that they vomit at the worm, ripping open its defensive layers and causing horrible injuries. Sometimes this will straight up kill the parasite. Lastly, if it is still in larvae coordination stage. Straight so if it's in a larval stage, this could kill it. Okay. Kill the parasite. 
Lastly, the anti-worm coordination cell arrives, the basophil. It makes sure that the immune system doesn't slow down, but keeps attacking with violence. It keeps the inflammation going and alerts more and more attack cells to the site of battle. Don't stop, just keep pushing Zooming forward. Out, we see keep that the killing. chemicals from your antiparasite forces make your smooth muscles contract rapidly, pushing everything that's inside outside. In your intestines, combined with all the water, you notice this as diarrhea as your body tries to expel ah, the stress okay. parasite. In your respiratory tract, loads of mucus and water flood outside, trying to take the worm with them. If this happens under your skin, your tissue is red, hot and itchy, as your immune system is trying to commit murder. It takes a Just fierce like army to kill a worm, and your anti-parasite forces have the license to act rapidly and with intense violence. Okay, this is nice and all, but what does all this have to do with killer shrimps? What is an allergy? Parasitic worms don't love being ripped apart by millions of bombs. And as all living things do, yeah, they I don't think anyone to the deadly does. attacks on them. In a nutshell, worms release a plethora of chemicals to manipulate your immune system. They make it weaker and much less angry, like immune system weed. Which is pretty bad for your like survival, weed. because you have to fight off all sorts of intruders every day. Our ancestors were basically unable to prevent regular worm infections. So, as the worms adapted to us, our bodies had to adapt to them. To balance out any weakening worm chemicals, one adaptation might have been to make our immune system more aggressive so it could still defend against other invaders. Oh. And then a hot second ago, in evolutionary terms, everything changed. Well, worms aren't really as much of a problem nowadays because we have, we have medicine for that. So, just how did that affect our immune system? Just how was that affected? I'm assuming maybe less aggressive? We suddenly invented soap and hygiene, but most importantly, the separation of poop and drinking water. This destroyed the life cycles of parasitic worms, and the ones that remained were eradicated by modern medicine. Yep, worms exactly. still infect up to 2 billion people, mostly in underdeveloped rural regions or slums uh, with yeah. unsanitary conditions and dirty water. The people who escaped these conditions now face an interesting problem. An immune system without a major enemy that had kept it down for millions of years. It could very well be that our immune system still operates assuming that worms are making it weaker and that it has to be overly aggressive because of that. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like how it, I assume it sees other things and eosinophils also as worms. and eosinophils also have other jobs, a major reason for their existence has now gone away. But they kind of act as if worms are around only that they now attack other dangerous ah. foes like the act as if worms are allergens have similar proteins to worms that trick the immune system to be fair i would still rather have allergies than worms like this still sounds like a better deal to me even though i don't have allergies because i've never had one as far as i know at around. least only that they now attack other dangerous foes like shrimps this is exactly what happens when you have an allergic reaction to a shrimp your immune system picks up shrimp proteins and produces IgE antibodies against shrimps. The antibodies then are mast cells, turning them into bombs. So you have millions of bombs in your skin, your lungs or your gut, with a license to choose violence even when provoked a little bit. Until one day you eat another shrimp. Your anti-parasite forces now you're flip screwed. on like a switch. It all just blows Only up. There is no kaiju to attack. This is what you experience when you have an allergic reaction. Extremely powerful weapons now target your own body. Under your skin, your blood vessels suddenly turn leaky. Fluid streams into your tissue. Your skin swells up and turns red, often in itchy hives. You immediately feel hot and unwell. In your digestive system, the mast cells can cause nausea, cramps and sharp pain as water floods the worst into your part intestines would be if and your triggers throat intense swells. diarrhea and vomiting. Your respiratory tract swells up, making breathing hard. Way more dangerously, histamine and other oh, chemicals oh, that just can swells cause up too. the okay, never muscles mind. in your lungs to tense up. In the best case, you get a stuffy nose. In the worst case, you're suddenly fighting for your life. Mast cells all over your body are... Okay, so I might actually have an allergy because during the summer, I often just have symptoms of a cold, like a stuffy nose for pretty much no reason and my eyes are itchy so that might be an allergy to something although it doesn't always happen it doesn't happen every single year and every single summer so that's kind of weird so i might actually not have an allergy whatever it's weird unload their Makes bombs no sense. all at once causing an anaphylactic shock your blood loses so much water that your blood pressure drops to dangerous levels 
This alone is life-threatening. In combination with the things going on in your lungs, anaphylaxis is a life or death emergency, often with just a small time window to do anything about it. Allergic reactions truly are no joke. Even the deadliest diseases like Ebola need days to kill you, but your immune system can kill you within a few minutes. Pretty quickly, yeah. And this is why a shrimp can kill you. Because on a fundamental level, <laughs> an ingenious defense system, vital for our species' survival for millions of years, is fighting imaginary kaijus. Yet we still don't know why some people produce a lot of IgE antibodies against certain substances and others don't. We don't know why some adults develop new allergies later in life or why some allergies disappear over time. And we're not sure if the lack of worms is the main culprit, only that the cells that evolved to fight them are responsible for the symptoms of allergies. There are other ideas, so like there's still less a lot diverse of unknowns about this. or increased pollution. Maybe it's just a combination of all of them. But what we clearly see is that allergies and their more serious cousin autoimmune diseases have been rising massively in the last 100 years. Wherever humans moved into more sanitary conditions and got rid of some of the horrible parasites hunting us. Hopefully we'll figure it out and prevent allergies forever, because one thing's for sure, we don't want to get worms back. That would really be like finding a spider and exploding a nuclear bomb. Give well once as many. Luckily for us, we do have what was it, EpiPens, and I think just adrenaline, which is what's inside an EpiPen, as far as I know, to fight off allergies. So it's not really that big of a problem. I mean, if you have an allergy, you definitely should have an EpiPen on you at all times, especially if you're in a place where you could come into contact with the thing that causes your allergies. But even if you don't have one because you don't know that you have an allergy, once you get to a hospital, You'll be, you'll be okay, probably. I'm also assuming that with time, we'll probably find out why exactly allergies happen in some people but not others. We'll probably find some way to stop that or at least make the effects less harmful as our understanding of medicine and the human body slowly progresses. And at the end of the day, allergies are still better than having worms. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and leaving a like if you're interested when I watch this video right here. And with that, I hope I'll see you in the next video.